Hey guys, welcome to another video. Now last week I spoke about going to the LRO show and coming back with loads of really inspiring ideas for Scout. Well today I thought I'd give you that walk around and show you all of the plans that I've got for the exterior, the interior and generally a full walk around showing you all of the things that I'm really excited about doing to Scout. Stay tuned and I'll give you a sneak peek of some of the videos to come and all of the modifications that I've got planned. Okay, so I thought the best place to start this video would be on the interior because in general I'm really happy with the upgrades that I've made and I don't have too many plans left for the interior itself. So in a previous video I spoke about fitting the Motolita steering wheel. So that's a 15 inch wheel, slightly smaller than the original Land Rover wheel so it gives you a bit more comfort and uh, you don't get that classic thing where you're, you're driving along and your elbows kind of resting along the door. It gives you a little bit more space. That's wrapped in an Alcantara material, so that's really comfortable and I think in general just really neatens up the look of the car. But what that's sat on is the Optimil steering wheel boss, so I can pull the two pins and actually remove the steering wheel, which means that of an evening I can feel much more comfortable about leaving it outside because I fit the Optimil steering wheel or swivel lock over the top. So that sits on the original pins over the top and then locks so no one can come along with an aftermarket steering wheel or attempt to try and steer it with the wheel boss or or anything like that so that's a really great upgrade and i'm really happy to have done that alongside the steering wheel almost at the same time i fitted the exmor trim high cubby box now that's really comfortable it obviously raises the cubby box height by probably another quarter from where it was at originally so it means that as you're driving along your arm actually sits at a more natural position it's got much more padding on top so again it's much more comfortable and i mean i use my cubby box as i'm sure many defender owners do as just a bit of a dumping ground but it gives you more space to dump all of your kit in so really happy with that too finally and again i spoke about this in another video i had uh, soundproofed the rear foot wells all over the seat boxes over the gearbox tunnel with a sound deadening material and then a six mil foam and that's drastically improved the sound quality in the car so i'm really happy with fitting that the problem is is that it's now emphasizing the sounds from the rear tub because i've done the all of the foot wells i've done the uh, second row foot wells but now when I'm driving along, I'm hearing a lot of noise from the rear tub. So I think again, uh, sound deadening and a six mil foam needs to do all that. And then I think I'll be really happy with the, with the sound in the car. The other thing I want to do is uh, soundproof the headlining and also all the doors. So for the headlining, a sound deadening material and then a six mil foam. But with the headlining, I've seen online that you can actually send off your original headlining and get it retrimmed. So that, as I do that work, that may be something I look to do. Retrimmed in some kind of Alcantara to match the uh, Motolita wheel. And then for soundproofing the door card cards, that's a little bit more involved. So uh, I need to take out the original, well, the door cards, maybe take out the window, the, the actuators and the mechanism that winds down the windows to soundproof behind those and then the cards themselves. So that's why I've been putting off that job. And also it's a 110, so there's uh, at least four doors and they've got to do the rear door as well. So five doors that I'd need to do that too. So that's why I've been uh, putting off that job. Other things to mention, I fitted the ORE corner protectors. They've been really great because obviously it's carpeted inside, but it really just protects the corners. They often get chewed up by the door cards or walking into the, or stepping into the car and chewing up all the carpet. So it needs all those up. So they've been a great addition. And then the other thing I'm thinking of doing is fitting a new head unit. Now these are quite costly. So again, this may be something that I do at a later date, but having looked at the some of the cars at the LRO show, basically taking this out and putting a new double DIN system in so I can get Apple CarPlay, my maps, everything in one single display. And then effectively you cut a new switchboard which moves some of the buttons onto this side panel. So I'd really love to do that, but it's just a cost at the moment. So something I may have to think about 
Now for the wheels and tyres, I originally fitted these black sawtooths and I've been really happy with how they look and if they've not been fitted for too long. However, at the LRO show, I saw lots of defenders that were fitted with wheels with a much deeper dish and also a greater offset, which meant that the wheel generally starts to fill the arch a little bit more and gives the defender a much greater stance. Alongside that, majority of people have got fitted the BF Goodridge tyres, especially the KO2s, and they have a much deeper uh, tread pattern on the tyre sidewall, and in general, fill out the arch even more. So that's something that I'd like to think about in the future. However, they'll probably stay a little bit longer until I can uh, work out what tyre to fit. So if you've got any thoughts, please leave a comment below. Now another problem on pretty much all defenders is that the door hinges can start to rust out. And that means that when you open the door, it doesn't feel as secure and the door will generally wobble on the pins. So that's something that I need to think about for Scout too. So in particular, the front door hinges have really started to rust out and I'm getting that problem when I open the door. There's several producers of aftermarket door hinges, so it's just a fact of working out which ones are best. Uh, they often supply a billet hinge, which means that it won't get this rusting problem uh, in the future. So that's something that I need to look at pretty much ASAP uh, to ensure that the, the, the doors are still secure. Another bugbear are the side steps. Now, I really don't like the silver checker plate that's on these steps. If you look around Scout, I've generally started to try and black everything out and give it that kind of stealth look. These aren't really helping with that look. So I'm looking at replacing them. Also, if you look at the kind of the riggers or the arms that attach them to the chassis, they're really starting to rust out. So I need a new uh, product open to recommendations for those um, but anything that's maybe slightly more durable uh, and doesn't have the silver checker plate on I'd be interested in hearing about. Something else that I've been going to and fro on is the roof rack. So this is the genuine Land Rover Expedition roof rack and in general I love the way it looks however it doesn't play very nicely with rooftop tents which is something that I'm considering getting so I'd have to modify in such a way where I cut bars or add additional support for the rooftop tent to sit upon and I'm not sure I necessarily want to do that. If I was going to replace it, I'd replace it with a flat rack. So I've been speaking to companies such as Patriot, Flat Dog, Front Runner, who've all got really great solutions, but I'm just not sure whether I like them visually as much as the genuine rack. So there's a bit of a debate in my mind at the moment. The other thing I want to do is fit spotlights. And I think in general, spotlights look great with the standard uh, roof rack. I've been looking at fitting the light part spotlights. So lining up with what I've got on the front, so those are the light parts headlights from or supplied by ORE. I'd be looking to do the same on the rack and I think that would look great. I just need to make that decision around which rack I'm going to go for. Now, as I said at the start of the video, the Land Rover show is great for getting loads of inspiration. And I've certainly done that, but I'm scared that it's going to slightly affect the bank balance because I saw lots of options for rooftop tents that I'm really interested in. I was speaking to Alec on the Land Trekker stand who's fitted the Land Trekker rooftop tent and that looks like a great solution but also there's options from Front Runner and Howling Moon and loads more that I need to consider. The other option as I said before is the roof rack so I'd have to probably get rid of the genuine rack in order to fit one so this real big debate in my head as to what to do. If you've got any thoughts or suggestions please leave a comment below because I'd really like your help on deciding what's next for up top. Now, the other thing that I was inspired by at the LRO show was fitting a drawer system. So I went over to the Land Tracker stand and Gav from the Instagram channel Defender Orkney was there showing off his camping setup. Now he got the rooftop tent, like a 270 degree awning, but also had recently fitted a front runner drawer system. He got it secondhand off eBay and reupholstered it and it looked really smart. And I'm thinking of potentially doing a similar thing. Fitting the drawer system with Scout is going to be slightly harder in the fact that I've still got the rear tumble down seats fitted. So I'll have to remove all the tumble down fold mechanism and then the seats themselves, which will in general buy me more space, but then I can fit the drawer system. The other benefit of fitting the drawer system is that it will raise the bed of the Defender up basically in line with the wheel arches. In doing that, I can then think about tumbling down the second set of seats when we get to camp and boarding over the top and creating a bed so we can sleep in the Defender. That's something that I still need to try and work out, see if it will actually work, but something I'm really excited about and may be the solution to uh, keeping the genuine roof rack and not necessarily having a rooftop tent. All plans that I need to kind of figure out, uh, but I'd be keen to hear your thoughts below.
The other thing that I saw was really good was a lot of people had got some high level storage in the back of their defenders. So a shelf that runs basically from the top of the rear windows and acts as a high level storage, camping chairs, all that equipment that you don't necessarily need for day one, tucked away, neatly stored, and then continues to give you extra space in the rear tub. So that's another thing that I think I'm gonna consider fitting. Now somehow I went to the Land Rover show but only came away with one purchase which to be honest I'm quite happy about because it means I can save for all of the extra modifications that I've seen. So I came away with the Loft Clutch Spring. So as many of you probably already know if you own a Defender the clutch could be slightly heavy. Now I hadn't experienced it too badly but especially going around towns, longer drives you can feel your thigh really starting to have a bit of a workout. Now the loft clutch will effectively make that clutch a lot softer, a lot lighter and a lot easier to drive. I had a little go with their demo model on the stand and I think it's going to take a little while to get used to but once I fitted it I'll do another video to let you guys know exactly how it works, the benefit of doing it and whether it's worthwhile. So that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the walk around of some of the upgrades and modifications that I've made so far and some of the future plans. If you've got any thoughts or comments, please leave the comment below because I'd be really keen to get your guys' thoughts and ideas on some of the stuff that I've walked through today. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a like and subscribe because I'm going to be posting much more regularly and that really helps me out. And I'd love to take you guys on the journey as I continue to upgrade Scout. And I'll see you in the next video.